What's up, Rockstars? Today I have an unboxing for Aeon Trespass Odyssey. I am the very last person in the world to get this thing, but we're gonna unbox it. We're gonna have a lot of fun with it too. Thank you to my channel sponsor, Into the AM. As a company that believes hard work and a great product is a proper way to conduct business, I am delighted to have them as part of the channel. They have some of the coolest graphic t-shirts around and an absolute best fit and feel that has continually exceeded my expectations. With new shirts arriving all the time and other products like boxers, hats, and even a monthly shirt club, I wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Check out the link in my description of this video for an exclusive 10% off everything they sell. All right, we're gonna go into the box in just one moment, but before we do, just as an FYI, I am having a fundraiser that is linked down in the description below. There are a lot of games that I'm giving back to those that donate, so if you're interested in any of that, feel free to check it out down the link below. And really, I guess just thanks for being here. Uh, there are other channels that already have the reviews out, nonetheless their unboxings out, and I just now got the stupid thing. So, uh, yeah, I went from probably one of the few people who have played it and were super jazzed about it to the very last person on the face of this planet to get it. If you have not gotten yours yet, feel free to comment down below. There was probably about a dozen of you, uh, perhaps, unless uh, you already got yours as well, in which case, I literally am the last, but we're gonna have some fun with it anyway. I'm super excited to dive into at least wave one of Antris Fest Odyssey. All right, so right off the bat, ironically, I believe all of these were airmailed. I think it actually ended up cheaper for them to do so, which actually um, is not the first time I've even seen it happen on Kickstarter. Um, just sometimes, depending on the logistics and how much you're sending away and all that, Big old planes can carry quite a bit. I do see some damage here. It's kind of ironic this is so damaged, considering it wasn't even put on the ocean for a couple months. Um, but uh, I, I don't know exactly how jostled necessarily went, and I don't know the quality of the cardboard. A lot of times it's not, you know, not all cardboard's created equal. So we will kind of go from there. But the outside of the box overall is pretty good, but certainly not the most immaculate box I've ever gotten. But we're going to go here. Trying to be very light here because I don't know what's on the other side. I've had boxes where it's like <laughs> right on the other side as the game, so I don't want to be scratching up really too much here. I can help it. Let me see. Okay, looks like I'm good. They do have at least a box there, though. I think that might be like a, a box I need. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. Now. A box in a box. All right, let me uh, take this out. Okay, you actually get to see me struggle a little bit here. There's this thing, and I don't know what this is, but this was the thing that was on top. It's the whole length of the uh, game. And then right here, you can see it. See it right there. There it is. <laughs> Looks like there was some damage over here, but we got these kind of thick cardboard corner things that are hopefully protecting it. Oh my goodness. How to get this out. Oh, I think I might just tip it. We'll play that game, huh? So we'll go here. Oh. What could go wrong? Alright guys? Hear loud crashing? Nah, see that's fine. That's fine. That that sounded great. <laughs> okay, so we did have oh, little corner pieces as well. All right, these are pretty firm, not very thick though. And then it looks like we got that one there. <laughs> the main box here. Oh, let's tip it over the other way and lift these off. Okay, uh, a little ding on a corner over here. Just gonna show that in a little bit here. Tip it down. Ugh. All right. There we go. I thought, and maybe this isn't the final box, I don't know, I thought the, uh, I mean, again, I'm not the last person getting this. Looks like it's just that corner that might be deemed slightly. Well, I thought I was the only one. Look, this is the back that has this. Let's see if the front, Woo! this over here. Whoa. Has the logo at all. Aha, uh -huh. right here. There's a little faint logo right there. Okay. Well, let's uh let's see what's going on here. Alright, so we're starting out here. Okay, cool. 
So this is really just for this, the mat. Now that's actually kind of interesting to me. Uh, normally they come in like a tube, but this was just in a box. I bet that's actually cheaper. And what's nice about that, I was able to fit in uh, the same box so it wasn't shipped separately. That also means I have no storage tube for it, but that's okay. It's, I mean, it's not even that big. Um, it is, it looks like it's stitched. We'll take a look at that, of course. I want to open up this, uh, this box, I think, first, though. And yeah, that is a very faint mark there. Like, I can barely see that at all. Get out of here. Ruining the picture. Ruining the frame. It's not even centered. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's try and dive in. <laughs> oh, this is heavy, by the way, guys. This might be, like, the heaviest game I have. It is dense. There's obviously a lot in there. My goodness. All right. So one thing I can't remember if I paid for or not. It makes me kind of sad. I don't know if I paid for the tiles. And I really hope I did. <laughs> I hope past me did. But, you know, it all depends on... That was loud. That was like a gunshot. Um, It all depends on... Uh, you know the funding I have, typically through Patreon, it's what I use to back most of the games that I want to get. But this was years ago, and I wasn't quite, uh, there wasn't, there wasn't quite as many as you back then, <laughs> so I don't know, we'll have to see. Um, I know, I've done cards, like with Etherfields and with Tainted Grail, and I must say I was not a fan. I did like the tiles more that I got in the prelude of this, because... The cards tend to like overlap each other and kind of move around a lot more, and the tiles don't. So that was kind of nice on that. I'm gonna have to cut this whole thing. Looks like I'm gonna have to. Come on. Try not to make that loud sound again. My goodness, I'll wake up the neighbors. Okay. Alright. Alright, so now let's do that. Flip it this way. Okay, now I don't know if you can see yet or not. It really depends on how washed out this all this white is. It's definitely quite drastic. Um, whether or not you can see the faint Aeon Trespass Odyssey there, it's very, very faint though. And then on here, maybe you can see, there we are, now it's in frame. So right here, it's a little bit of ding on the box. Not too bad, but uh, that cardboard definitely was enough, not with something this heavy. And, and this, as well, I mean, that is just not thick enough. Mainly because I think pressure can still go through and not break it, right? So it's not punctured, but it definitely had pressure as it got knocked down, because these are really heavy. I'm sure they've been knocked around a lot. Okay. And then there's a the slight... Get in focus. Hello? There's a slight watermark here as well. All right, let's go ahead. Get rid of some of this white. Oh my gosh, guys! That was not easy to lift, which means it really does need a hole, right? A little tiny hole for air to kind of pass through, um, if you're willing, because my goodness, or just open it once and never again. <laughs> that was a lot. So inside the box, fairly sturdy, quite thick, uh, seemed pretty rigid. So that's good. I didn't really feel like it was going to warp or bend or do anything like that. Um, it's actually kind of a heavy box. I mean, just the box itself is heavy, to be honest. Okay, we got some... Uh, <laughs> I'm out of breath, guys. My goodness. Got some uh, cardboard cutouts here. They are wrapped. This is nice because it means you often won't find missing ones. Uh, they do this most often just to make assembly of a box easier. It means you have a whole bunch of these. And instead of trying to pair the four different... It's like one, two, yeah, four different uh, trays. You have the one in here, right? And everybody gets the one. Um, so that tends to help with that. Let's go ahead. I think I'm going to move the box back and forth quite a bit here. So for now, let's move that over there and take a look at this. And this is, this is obviously the most obvious part. I actually like this. I prefer this much more than the faint. Um, it's a nice black, white, and gold. Looks very clean, very sleek. And I really like that. I actually like that way more than the faint um, symbol that it has on there. Okay. Now. <laughs> it 
the sticky part is like separate. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had that happen. Get off me. <laughs> well, that's separate. All right. I got these here. Hopefully it all fits back into itself too, right? That's, that's the key there. This is quite thick. I mean, you can kind of see and just, I mean, even feel how thick that is. Well, I guess you can't feel, but when, when you, well, when you get it, you guys already have it. You guys know then, I guess. You just want to hear me react to it more than anything. That's a Triskelion thing there. So that's nice. It's like different terrain and stuff. Okay, so the terrain is grid-based, so it's all square. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, it, it, it's all square uh, instead of like the shape of the thing you're, you're punching out, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. The tag is pretty... Obvious, but also pretty small. That's because it's black. Anytime you get the little tags, it's always white. I don't know if there's a way to get around that or not. But if so, nobody's figured it out. <laughs> like to get the tags black too, that would be kind of nice. But doesn't ever seem to be the case. It seems to always be white. There is a linen finish. It is not super shiny, which I appreciate, but it is shiny. I've definitely seen ones that are less shiny. I, I typically actually don't like linen finishes just because of the shiny issue. Um... Just because you, you see that reflectivity. And so sometimes you're looking at it like that. That was a big problem with Darkest Dungeon. This one seems pretty okay, though. There does seem to be... It's not pure black, and I think that's on purpose. I think there's like this overall um, design to it that maybe you can see, maybe you can't. Where it's not quite black. Or maybe I can zoom in here. So, like right here, you see how that's not black. Right? It's a little bit lighter. Same with right here. But it almost seems like it's a pattern. That's, that's what I'm telling myself right now, anyway. Jeez, it's upside down. What the heck is wrong with me? <laughs> Do some of these long ones here. I think these are two different ones. Yeah, so they are split there. Um, and again, this, this certainly went fine. It does look like it may be a little bent. They're definitely um, not the, uh, the, the sturdiest. They don't quite feel like wood. They're definitely cardboard. Uh, but overall, pretty good. This is definitely a long piece for that. I'm not really seeing any flaying or anything like that. On the backs, I do get a little bit. You can see a little bit of that white now. Oh, focus there. You see that little white there, and then no white. That's that's from doing that. So this will definitely look um, played. <laughs> you won't be able to hide the fact that you played it uh, for sure. So there's some May stuff there. Uh, little smaller tokens here. That tends to punch out fine though. I'm 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 fine with these. And actually, the smaller ones actually feel quite good. Uh, this you know the smaller the typically there's less flex and stuff like that so we've got some bigger ones here some some unique shape ones it's going to do one of the unique shape ones that's uh, totally fine there's like a little tag there and that's really it on that which is pretty nice they're double-sided so that's good got some bigger ones here already kind of starting to fall out. and again you can see that all the non-black there too so it definitely i think is the design i imagine that's on purpose and these actually looks like there's two different ones, and then of course one here as well. Lots of different uh, different tokens and tiles and stuff to do things. Even more here are these. Ma this maze looks way different than the than the maze from the uh, the prelude. Uh, we got some nymphs as well. Uh, again, I don't remember if I got the minis of them. I don't think I did, which would be unfortunate uh, because they're they're kind of like summons. You can summon them in to kind of help out. Which seems kind of cool, and they're they're very artistic, of course, as well. Uh, but some of these look, yeah, really, really cool. Definitely excited to kind of play around, and see what all of these are, and then we have the Triskelion system, of course, as well. I'll keep this on top because I'll probably want to build one just to kind of see how that plays and the the dial there. The dials do have zeros. Often you'll find dials that don't have zeros, and so you're always at like one or something like that. It makes it kind of weird to get like this one off issue. Where it's like I gained my first, let's say, fate. It's like, well, I'm already at one, so does that mean I go to two, or, or what? You often need that uh, that zero. Okay, this tray looks legit, guys. It really does. Here is the game board um, when it comes to uh, the actual cardboard. So we'll take a look at that. Um, it is a little dinged here. You can kind of see that right there. A little ding in the corner there. Uh, let's see, the glue job looks good. Um, there's a little bit of a peel you can see here, a little bit of extra, not quite, not quite staying there. So we'll go ahead and do this. It's not double sided, so this is black on the back, which is fine. That's okay. All right. Oh, oh, got it. Wait, maybe. Oh, 
My table's not big enough, guys. All right. All right. There we go. Barely. <laughs> it's upside down. Well, you guys are going to have to deal. It's going to be upside down. <laughs> so you have some spaces for some cards down here. And then on the side as well, like your summon and miscellaneous Argo ability. So you're going to have stuff kind of around this. It'll definitely probably be in the middle of the table. Um, though there is a map, so sometimes it may be on the side. Often, I think for the map, we ended up using a side table. Um, but there's not a lot of unused space, but there is some. Uh, so for instance, I don't think... Obviously, you know, we have these like letters here. But I don't know if this is a space. If this is, and I think that's pretty good. If it's not, then you have like this much space on all the sides. But I'm wondering if this very edge is. I'm assuming so because it has a one up here. I'll show you that. So, so you like A1 would be like right here. So it looks like that is a legitimate space. In which case, cool. As for, you know, the board itself, it's definitely um, pretty, pretty hardcore, right? I mean, you got this raven like eating this guy's stomach and crap. So... Uh, definitely um, not uh, the most non-violent game board I've seen. <laughs> uh, while we are here, let's go and take a look at the neoprene matte version of it. Uh, what I'm looking for here is the print quality um, to see if, you know, sometimes the, the color is wrong. It's a little darker and stuff like that. So we'll take a look here. But it looks actually really good. Um, so... I will say it is not stitched, so I was wrong there, which is unfortunate. I think it really should be stitched, um, ideally. It doesn't look like it's any bigger, so it's not a, a size increase or anything like that, which means it'll work with the tokens and stuff, which I'm fine with. There is, it's a little, you can kind of see it's not quite flat here from the inner curl, curl so I'll actually curl it the other way. Um, but over time, um, when you don't get it stitched, you're going to get a little bit of flaring here, just like you do on like a mouse pad or anything like that. It's actually quite thick. Um, it's definitely not the thinnest I've seen, which is nice. It feels good. There's a little bit of squish to it. Um, and it, again, the print quality is like immaculate. Like it looks really good print wise. I'll definitely be playing on this as opposed to the board. Um, but yeah, it would have been nice to have it stitched. I feel that would have been probably the, the increase I would have liked. I'm not sure. If the coloration, I think the coloration is good. So this right, you know, on the sides here are a little faded, but they are honestly here as well. Come back to this. Like they're pretty faded. You can tell there's a little bit of a blue hint to that, but I mean, just barely. So overall, I think we're good there, but I'm not going to roll it up right now, but just so to not waste time, I suppose. Okay, oh, I'm going back here. Okay, so we got some books here. Let's do this giant one first. That looks fun. Ugh. There's a lot here, guys. A lot here. So this is Truth of the Labyrinth Cycle 1. And this is massive. Like, truly massive. Oh, it looks like there's actually multiple books in here. Okay, so there's that one. And then there's Cycle 2 in here as well. Abyssal Watchers. So I imagine this is just Cycle 3. Yes, the Pitiless of the Sun, Cycle 3. Very cool. I'm going to leave that one in the wrap. So I won't be using that quite yet. I'm going to put this one back too, so we won't get any spoilers, except to say that um, these are about just as thick as each other, I would say. So that's pretty close. Uh, the, the, the look of it is obviously really sweet. I do dig that it looks really good. Go ahead and take a look open. I love that off white. That's cool. Okay, we got a list of table of contents, credits. What is this book? Special cycle one rules, and then the main story, and then a whole bunch of other stuff around battles and whatnot. And we have a little adventure hubs too, where you're seeing kind of what you're doing uh, with the battle terrain and w the story and stuff like that. Some great art. Art that is for sure. Um, pretty small text, so if you are, let's say, not in your youngest of years, um, or otherwise are seeing impaired for whatever reason, uh, that was going to be pretty darn small, especially like, like this stuff here. This is really small text. Um, I do like all the color. I like the layout. I like the fact that there's no margin at all. It goes straight to the edge there. The pages feel nice. And then we're at story. 
So I think uh, like that's this is just the storybook really. It's like all this is is story. There are pictures throughout by the looks of it. I'm purposely just kind of speeding along there. Uh, definitely looks cool. I dig it. Okay. Okay, back with this. So this is a really guys. This is like really thick. Let me actually take these off so that let's see what's going. On. Like I don't know why that's different. But whatever. I just want to show this like this is you see how there's like no crinkle or anything like this, this is very very thick and you kind of see the thickness here um very sturdy plastic um there is no little dimples on the bottom to necessarily hold the mini so they look like they all stayed in place i'm wondering if they're snap in it looks like no which is good okay well that's great that's cool so i think i don't know exactly what this is this just just there to look cool. Looks like all the no. There's gotta be a rule book somewhere, right? Am I missing the rule book? <laughs> Hello. Where's the rule book? Aha! Aha! There we go. Okay, so we'll wait on the minis. Ooh, there you go. You saw them. <laughs> we'll we'll do that. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. First things first, though. Once I start on the minis, guys, I'm gonna be there for like a bajillion hours. So let's let's be reasonable. We'll try to be as reasonable as we can. Be. Oh, oh, styrofoam spacer thingy. Move this. I don't know why this is covered up. I don't think it's uh, hiding anything unique there. I think it may just be. Can I see these? Not sure. Maybe we'll open that last. Okay, we got. Uh, this is for the Triskelions. So this is the Learn to Play. Does that mean rule book? Is that your version of a rule book? A Learn to Play book? <laughs> Technically, technically, you should have two books. You should have one, like a learn to play, right? It's just like a, hey, here's how you play. Here's, here is the information you need to play, and it's written in a way for you to learn. And then you need a documented rule book. In other words, the rule book isn't there to learn. Oh, maybe that's what they did here. That's funny. Okay, so, and again, like, I purposely don't watch other unboxings or anything like that, so you guys get first honest opinions. So, <laughs> sorry if I'm a little behind on this. But you, you should have to, right? Because a rule book needs to document the rules at like ad nauseum, right? Or, or however you say that. What I mean is it needs to be a documentation, which isn't something you learn from. That's something you look up, right? To learn, you need it to be worded in a much more of an English normal kind of way or whatever language you're playing the game in, right? Like not super technical. In other words, it shouldn't read like an EULA, whereas this would read like an end user license agreement, right? But this shouldn't read like that. This should be very plain English and just easily learned. So let's see if that's what they did. Uh, I, first of all, I do love the art style that they ended up with. It looks really great. So on the back is not an index, at least on this one. So they have a tutorial battle set up, which is fine. Okay with that. I don't recall a tutorial battle. That must be nice. I think it just played the prelude. <laughs> tutorial campaign. Round six. Looks like it probably takes you through the tutorial campaign by the sounds of it. It's a cool art piece. Arise, tutorial battle, additional battle rules, battle aftermath. And then you have uh, Call to Adventure, The War Philosopher, Ashes of Alexandria. This might be something actually I did go through. This seems familiar, perhaps. Yeah, okay. You fight the Hecaton there. Okay, they do some stuff, and you so you start with a fight first. See if they get to um, like research and development, and traveling all around the map, and all that kind of stuff. Additional battle rules. Okay, modifier tokens. Blah blah blah. Come on, I can't even flip one page, guys. I'm on fifteen, you get to sixteen is what I need. That's what I need. Whatever. We're on the tutorial campaign. Yes, and then the Odyssey resumed. Okay, yep, and now you're on the map, kind of doing your map stuff, so that's cool. I dig that. It does have little story bits in here as you're kind of playing through. That looks nice, that looks nice. That's a fun little guy, whatever the heck that is. <laughs> okay, so this just takes you through a little sample campaign. Uh, so you learn by doing. So let's see how this one's structured. Again, like stuffed crust pizza, you start in the back to look at the index, which is not here. So let's see what is here. The most popular in-game symbols. Were they voted the most popular or were they the most common? I don't know if that popular and common are, are the same thing. Um, I feel like popular would be like uh, maybe which ones you look up the most. Maybe that's it. Maybe through the playtesting this is what people had to look up the most. Not sure. Last page summaries. 
campaign round sequence. This is kind of like a little player aid here. Oh, okay, now we got an index. So, it, a master index, very nice. Uh, often it's nice to have it at the very back, just so, you know, it's like, it, it's there and you have to go looking for it. This is pretty close, I'll give it a pass there. It includes all rules found in this rule book, as well as in all three storybooks. Unless or otherwise, all page numbers refer to this book. All references in the storybook are explicitly denoted. So you can look up in here and then find where you need to go. Ideally, in my opinion, everything is here. Ideally, every single rule is here. Even if you want to repeat it in another book, that is fine. It's up to you. But I would like a one-stop shop for any rule ever for the game. And this documents and stores all of those rules. My opinion on that. I'm fine with uh, the very end uh, campaign rules or something like that. But I don't know. Well, I'll have to see what the story... Oh, I saw the storybook. It doesn't seem like it had that much in it. Anyway, it is in alphabetical order. Uh, it is bolded, so it's easy to find, and they do list the pages. They do list multiple pages, I imagine. Uh, so right here, like on, on charge, it lists three different ones based off of a breakdown of it. Let's see if any actually list multiple pages. This is interesting. So like, let's see, uh, jump here. See cycle two storybook, page seven. See also primordial movement type in cycle two storybook, page six. So it looks like it lists multiple pages to, if it's listed multiple pages. But it looks like, first of all, it'll list whatever the first page is. So let's say it started on 57 or something like that, and it's on 58. They're only going to list 57 there. And they're going to specify what the other ones are. So knockback X is on page 63, but see also unavoidable knockback on page 36. That's interesting. I wonder if there's an unavoidable knockback. Where it also says C knockback. That'd be a good test, right? Unavoidable knockback. <laughs> so I do not see an exhaust unique unoccupied. So uh, ideally it would have unavoidable not back as well. And then it says see not back. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of hard, right? Like you just have to kind of judge how much you need, if that makes sense. But I, I have been found at some times to like look up something and really what I'm trying to find is listed somewhere else. Like it mentioned nymph, sum, nymph summoning with the charge here. Like is there an actual nymph summoning? Or do I have to know I need to look up charge to find nymph su summoning, right? Uh, nymph summoning. Okay, so that one does have it, right? So that's good. Page 22 and then charge here. Nymph summoning, page 22. Okay. All right, but it doesn't say then see charge. I don't know how how much that's there but that's enough of the index at least there is one i appreciate it and i'm sure it's more useful than not okay table of contents okay and then uh some credits and a nice introduction here which is interesting i don't know if you're assumed to have read this book yet or not um so it might be kind of a moot point to introduce it here hard co-op escalating world inverted combat paradigm i'm glad they are defining all these i like the table of con or the Game components list where it shows the picture and the name and the count of the item. All that is very useful. Um, obviously for minis, it's not going to show every single one, which can be kind of an issue. It just has like 11 primordial miniatures. If you're like, okay, let's say you're missing the Hecaton, but you don't know its name, right? So it'd be kind of nice to be like, I also don't have that one. What's that one called a Hecaton? I need to go ask for that. Um, so in my opinion, more is better. Again, uh, like, rule book in my opinion should be pretty exhaustive because it shouldn't be what you learn out of if it's what you learn out of then it can't be exhaustive you're going to lose them right it's, it's be like the um uh the rule book for uh batman gotham city chronicles where it's like yeah, there's just too much <laughs> or it's like you know the, the battle system that to fight somebody is like eight different you know points All right, campaign basics. I like starting with the basics of a campaign voyage phase. All this makes sense, but again, I would probably know about the voyage phase already from here, which is fine. It's okay to repeat it, especially if this is the thing I look things up in. It needs to be here. Again, really small text on some of this. Um, obviously, you're not supposed to read stuff like this, right? This is a picture um, with text on it. End step, adventure phase. This looks very, very detailed. Um, so hopefully it, uh, it, it helps. Um, obviously there's a lot of symbols and I don't know how helpful that popular one necessarily is, but I'm sure on Board Game Geek, uh, somebody has like made printouts of everything. Uh, that's often the case. Yeah, this looks good. I dig it. All right. Whew. Done with the rule book.
One step at a time, guys. Ugh. All right, now we got a lot of cards here. Looks like some even fell out a little bit. Uh, we got the character cards here. Do not open until told to do so. You're not the boss of me, but I will choose not to, but not because you told me to. Looks like we got some spacers to hold some area in. Dice. Got to look at dice. Oh, looks like that probably fell out. Looks like this probably goes in there. Oh, it's bigger. Interesting. I'll put it in the back then. There we go. <laughs> look at some dice, guys. Let's look at some dice. Oh, I love this red. I really like uh, it's a little orangey, but uh, otherwise I do like appreciate a dark red. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, so you guys can see that. It looks good. You got kind of an off white, a little creamy, an off black, and an off red. Uh, so all of them are a little off. <laughs> Just like me. Alright, looking at the dice itself. Uh, they are scuffed up and all that. It's pretty typical. They're very rounded on the corners, which means that they will definitely roll a lot. Um, it also means they are not perfectly random. So if you feel you or have bad luck with the die, that very well might be the case. If you want perfectly um, accurate die, you want a straight edge, a super straight crisp edge. That's why all the casinos use them. Um, the paint inside looks good. Uh, some of them just have like a little dot there, which is interesting. And then, you know, one, and then this one plus that, and then two of those, and a dot. Again, I don't, I don't remember what all these do. It's been so long. We have kind of a, a more normal thing, but, oh, this is kind of interesting. So this has a special symbol, but it's really all the way down here where the, the corner piece goes right to the bottom there, which is very an interesting choice. The paint on here is a little rough. There's some of these black spots on the side where the white has been kind of chipped off probably from rolling. So this is not the best painted ever. Hopefully you can kind of see all of that. Um, there's just a spots kind of on the side. But interesting places of the symbol. Looks like, yeah, it looks like it did on purpose. So it's not quite scented per se. They're very light too. Um, all the dice are, seem very light. Overall, uh, again, I'm pretty happy. I think these, the, the black in particular shows the scuff marks, I feel maybe more than uh more than any of the others so i don't know if you can you can see all the like where it's been rolled because uh, what they'll do is you know they clip them off of a uh uh a sprue just like uh, any other piece of plastic and then they roll them and they roll them and they're in those turntables are rolling constantly and that smooths that out um so, so they look good overall i'm good with them i like them they look nice uh the painting could improve a little bit uh, in my opinion, but other than that, um, I think she's oh, as loud, guys. Um, other than that, I think uh, it's quite vibrant, and even on this, this uh, having it slightly orange uh, allows you to see that black a little bit better than if it was just a dark red, dark red and black. And again, I have so much light pointing to this. Welcome back to the land of focus. I have so much light pointing to this. But it's not realistic. This is not how you would game. You would actually get a headache, I feel. I often get a headache just from filming these unboxings, which is all the light. I'm very sensitive. I'm just a sensitive guy. Okay, let's say we have a whole bunch of cards. So before we move on to the cards, I want to look at some of these because this looks like a lot of fun. So if I'm not mistaken, this is both uh, some of the characters you'll have to play, uh, or pilot, I should say. Some of the titans but then also um with some research and stuff so we will see yes definitely so there's all sorts of stuff here so these are kind of your starting ones uh there is a front and back it looks like uh they have their uh kratos table abilities and it looks like everybody probably has the same on that this looks like a general help thing on the back tiny attack sequence revolving an ai card battle sequence um definitely a lot of space here um, that's not used at least currently, and then you have the trauma and the cradles. You can place cards on top of this, right? They kind of like uh, buff up your character. They all have their different names. Uh, most people name the, the bottom Dreamwalker is the type, right? Or the Earth Shaker. Here's the Maze Runner here. Very cool art, of course. Logic Breaker, Game Changer. And then I believe these are different like quests that you can go on this is there's a front and back so i'm gonna not really show too many i think of those we're gonna skip over some of those here is a boss card 
There's the Hecaton there. And I love the little symbols you can have. And it has uh, what where front is on it and where the rear is on it. And then the different things it can do, as well as a signature card here and a routine one over there. And then it looks like there's probably the different version of it here is my assumption here. See, this goes up to four. This goes up to five through nine. Or maybe you have to flip it over. I don't... Again, it's been a long time. Years. So, some of you might follow that up more than me. I don't know, guys. I always forget rules of games, like, all the time. Like, I can't just, like, pick up any of these games and play them. I go read the rule book again. That's disgusting. I don't I don't know if I remember that little thing coming out. I don't like that at all. <laughs> the, the Pursuer there, the War Keeper, the Fire Starters. Very cool. Very cool. And it looks like we have some more stuff there. I'm not going to look through everything, just in case you guys don't want to. Um, and looking at every single card, it's just not necessarily uh, the best use of everybody's time. There's only so much to comment besides, ooh, that art looks cool. Ooh, that art looks cool. I do like the size. Like, seeing that person down there is really cool. Uh, I think this actually went behind them, but whatever. They're in front now. What are you going to do about it? Let's look at some map cards. Those are not tiles. I don't know if that means I didn't get the tiles, um, or if they're all wave two. That'd be unfortunate. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm not gonna wait to play them. Uh, let's find. I don't recognize this area so much. I wanna find one? Oh, come on. Uh, kind of like I, I semi recognize. Obviously, a different art style than when I played it, which is kind of interesting. If they changed it so much like that. I guess. Okay. Uh, I kind of recognize this. Let's take a look here. Hopefully, this means easy open. It does. It maybe. Easy for normal people or easy for me? I don't know. There's a difference. <sighs> okay, guys. Now you're just making fun of me. Oh, I almost got it. Yeah, boy, look at that. All right. Perfect. Woo. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, so this art style has changed. And uh, I, I really like it. I think it's very clear kind of where everything goes or whatever now. Um, and again, I don't know exactly which way they're going to face. You can see oh, this is 53 up here, 61 over here, right? Um, one of the cool things is like these small passages here and stuff. Often what you have to do, see like this, you'll need a special symbol uh, to be able to pass it. So it's very like Metroidvania-like. You think of like the uh, locked doors where you need the super missile to shoot out or the morph ball to get through or whatever, stuff like that. Um, as you unlock new technology, you can go to new locations. So as you're exploring, you're going to see places you can't go to or can't navigate past. And you'll have to kind of come back and note that when you have the technology. And kind of keep that in mind. When we were doing that, if we knew we were going to unlock the technology soon, we would start heading back there, if that makes sense. So again, all these kind of like passages and channels and stuff. But it ends up making a very cool um, map. And it's, you don't necessarily have to keep the whole thing. At least we didn't feel like we really needed to. So, um, anyway, yeah, there's, there's a lot here. Uh, but it's kind of like a, you know, Tainted Ground, really in those things where often you don't need the entire map, um, film that it's, it's fine. Not filmed, but set out. It's fine if, if, if you pack up like the starting location. You're not going back there. <laughs> Though, in this one, maybe you are. But if so, you can always rebuild it, right? Because it tells you where each piece goes. It's not random. It does form a, a designed map, which is both good and bad. Now, I'm seeing a lot of cards here, and I do know no trespassing. <laughs> Funny. Okay, well, I won't trespass then. Fine. Um, that people have complained about not having... Um, sorry, not having uh, 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 separator cards. So, uh, yeah, these are just going to be one big thing, right, until you're done here. Let's see if there's anything really interesting to look at here. Um, I don't know if I even really need to open all of this. Um, Ambrosial Vesicle. That sounds bad. <laughs> uh, the Returned Cursed Heritage Fate. Yeah, you know, as you're going through, you're going to find all these different things. and be like, oh, you now have this. Go find this card. Or, um, oh, you've done this. Now I'll be able to do that. So, see, this... To get to the Terluscation, right, it has a requirement, and then it leads to this. This is like a research one. Titan genetic memory, a structural. Uh, there is a knowledge hidden in the Titan's blood. This is a level three here, and the requirement is you already have advanced Titan breeding, and what this leads to is Titan care. 
And then on the back, it's going to say like, oh, this is what it allows you to do. Uh, there's a, a gymnasium expansion and a genesium. Immediate, add all pattern cards you gained in the cycle. So like as you're researching, whether it's weapons, whether it's armor, whether it's new types of titans, all of that stuff, you're learning um, based off what you guys decide to research. And each of the research costs, you know, different things. Aero, aero barrage. Uh, you can actually have your your uh, arc uh, help you with some fights, like off map, which is really cool. Uh, diplomatic relations, pursuer problem, peace, anti indoctrination philosophy. I mean, I, I I did those philosophies. These are. Oh, let's see, what the heck is this? Why is this? Worry, I did something wrong here. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what the, where does that even come from? What the heck? I was trying to. Do, I was going to show you guys the wounds and double wounds and stuff like that. This is a body part, a BP, <laughs> as it were. You guys should be aware of body parts from pretty much all other boss battlers. Just about all of them. Come on. See, sometimes I think these are just there for, for pretend. You know, some of those I don't think I ever get. Okay. So you get all these different kind of uh, hardened ambrosial skin. Mask of smoke, faces of defeat, uh, inscribed rib cage, because why not? Black bones, see there's different body parts for different things. Sword graveyard, blazing muscles, bloodied wool strand, skull head, uh, pigmalone stone, billowing maw, the heel, uh, the black blade, uh, ambrosial infestation. So you get all these different... Uh, types of body parts depending on what you're fighting and the level and all that kind of stuff but there's a ton of stuff here and it says what happens if you fail wound or critical it right and so you can kind of use that to your your advantage now uh, that's a routine for the hecaton here's some uh different terrain and what it does like what does a city do versus the labyrinth because when you're fighting there's like cities again you're this giant titan so it's not like this little thing at all um and these are Mimnos cards, I believe, where you can get all sorts of stuff. Uh, again, I don't want to spoil too much here, but uh, a lot of stuff can happen through that. So that's fun. And again, I don't know like the order of things here, like what separates what. Like right now, I mean, you can kind of see on the side here, right? There, <laughs> where the cards are separate, I guess. But yeah, it certainly don't know which one's which. And there's just so many. Uh, these are different attacks, like a left hook and stuff like that. Uh, they can do all sorts of fun attacks. Again, the the labyrinth bulls, like running around and knocking everybody down and uh, dropping uh, uh, mazes on you. <laughs> they literally knock you down and you're stuck in it. Like the one with a lot of fists can just keep hitting you over and over again. There's all sorts of fun stuff. No trespassing. Okay, fine. So anyway, yeah, a lot of cards here. I don't know... Really, I need to go through all these, and looks like some of them are good to go through. Some of them aren't. What the heck happened? Like, like what, what happened there? I don't even know. There's all these little cards as well. Tons and tons of that. Come on. Fine, I'll take this one. No trespassing. Well, fine. Jeez. Uh, so you can have different, different weapons and stuff. This is a rebound hammer. Very cool looking armor. Uh, this is some kind of advanced gear technology thing you can have. Just lots of fun stuff here. Uh, here's a, some kind of transformation junk or, or whatever. A major trauma you can have. That doesn't sound good. Then more stuff here. Siren tusks. I mean, yeah, sure, why not? It's got a spiral two opening two, assist two, reposition two, right? All the, all that stuff there. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. Anyway, tons of that stuff here. There's secrets in here, I think, and then secrets in here. I mean, that's really it for the cards. There's, uh, like I said, there's a lot of stuff here. One of the cool things is when you're, when you're drawing, like, your, your, uh, death cards, you can either die, but sometimes you might be okay, and very rarely you go Super Saiyan, and that's super cool. <laughs> All right, um, let's go ahead and build, uh, Treskelion. My, uh... Blade is wanting to come out. Let's put that on the floor so I step on it later. You have the fate, the rage, and the danger. That's nice. I believe when I played, they didn't have the names on the bottom there. I, I don't think they did. So it's nice to see that. Okay, now on this, didn't mean to grab them all. You're going to have uh, small pokies and big holdies. <laughs> 
And of course they just go into each other. So uh, let's see, let's match the symbol. Rage is like a God of War Omega. And I would assume, see how it does, I mean that, also, okay, it shows right there. Perfect, okay, cool. Um, I don't know which one, I normally do Pokey on the top and Holy on the bottom, but then I always do that and I always do it backwards, dear Lord. Because see me struggle on basic things? Yeah, I can do that. Let's push this through. No, okay. All right, so we're going to push it through this away. <laughs> like that. There we go. All right. And now this will go here. Like so. There we go. And now it spins. Wow, look at that. Amazing. Wow, it's fascinating. Okay. Let's do one for fate. Okay. Push that in there. And now... Fate. One more for danger. Danger, the lower it gets, the stronger you are. And fate allows you to do stuff like rerolls and special moves and stuff like that. And then I believe rage is like a spendable resource. But you got the one here, the one here, and the six does even have a dot. So you know if it's a six or a nine. And then the one here. Very nice. Looks cool. I like it. That's actually a lot, sm a lot smaller than I remember it. I think my version was like huge. So that's nice. All right. Um, so I guess we need to look at some minis. Ugh. All right. I am excited, guys. I'm really excited. Let's start, I think, with just some of the heroes that you've probably seen from before. There we go. All right. So yeah, definitely exactly kind of how I remember it. Um, it's always fun to see how big they are. Painting this would help a lot. For instance, there's a horse here and like trees down here. This is like a uh, catapult made into like a crossbow. Um, so these are like huge. Uh, you see a little bit of a uh, runner mark here from where it fit onto the sprue. Um, you can see the, it was like a chariot back end that made the quiver of arrows in the back here. Very, very cool to see. I really dig it. Like, I, I do that a lot. Um, they made it a bit more sturdy. Uh, her back foot is on a tree stump here, and then her leg is right next to a tree here. Um, and that just helps her kind of, uh, have this dynamic look and stay there. I do like the sculpted, uh, base very much. I think that looks great. Um, and you know, again, like this hill doesn't look big, but it's actually bigger than you would think. Um, these are bushes, by the way, and I don't think any of these are full trees because the horse was sitting up would be about this tall, right? So it's not like massive, massive, but it is pretty big. But I think some of them get bigger. I don't want to show that one yet. That's a freaking cool one. Um, where the like other just like normal ones? I don't know. Here, we're gonna look at this one. So I think this is an upgraded version of this one, essentially. Um, it looks very similar hair-wise, but perhaps not. Uh, very cool looking kind of mask thing. Uh, and the arm going backwards is very interesting. You don't see that a lot. Uh, this seems to be slightly bent a little bit. You can see it is pretty bendy. Uh, so it might need to be slightly straightened, but overall it looks pretty good. Um, definitely gets thicker here. The texture on it looks cool. I dig that. Uh, holding the, like, uh, shield right to the body is really interesting. I dig that. I like the fact that you can see the fingers there. So it's pretty obvious. Uh, the actual, like, armor that they're wearing is cool. Especially these, like, hydraulic things to, like, enhance the, like, leg movement to make them go faster. Very sculpted base. I dig that. Again, you can see the trees and the bushes and stuff like that as they're kind of running through. So that's cool. I should probably not just keep these. Where'd you come from right there? <laughs> Where'd you come from? Let's come over here. Aha! This is probably what that's actually upgraded from. So this is uh, like a really cool pigtail. I really dig that. I like the helmets kind of in general. This is like the mast of a ship that they're using, like this giant mass. It is a little skinny here, and that made it a little bendy, but not too bad. And it looks like uh, there was a runner knockoff there. These are like little matrix things, right? They like hook up to in the ship. 
Um, and then this was made into kind of a solid piece. I think it may have not been at first. It looks like it's um, the line separating it is very, very clear. So I appreciate that. Um, I think once you paint it, it'll look pretty separate. Like I'm, well, that's her leg here, and this is like her, her uh, like cloak. That's all textured down here too. It's not flat, so I appreciate that. That's cool. Uh, yeah, overall, very, very cool. Kind of a, um, a, a, I don't know, a very unique sculpt because she's looking up, which I think is abnormal. But it's definitely not the most common sculpt you see. This guy, I've actually already painted. You can see that on my channel. Uh, I really enjoyed painting him too. And painting them really adds a ton. I can't tell you guys enough about that. This is a ship shield, which again, I think is awesome. And you can actually find these shields and weapons that are on these minis as cards. Those are actual things that you can definitely do. Um, again, you can kind of see, I think, a horse here. Um, and then some other little bits of, you know, just terrain in general. But again, very, very cool, very muscular, very well defined. The inside of the ship is also sculpted. I do appreciate that. Um, and, and the ship just in general, it's just a cool idea to have a shield there like that. I like his beard too. I think that adds a little bit of uniqueness there. Let's look at some of the, I think, more interesting uh, ones. Let's see, so I already looked at that one. Do we look at this one? No, so yeah, here's one here. Look at this guy. Uh, or lady. So again, a little bit of a bend here, but I appreciate how skinny this is. It's not super fat at all. It's a little bit of hot water and uh, that'll just kind of uh, keep its shape quite nice. I might even be able to do that by hand. Again, you can see this really uh, gnarly beard here, which I appreciate. The helmet looks cool. The shield looks cool. Very cool pose. I like how um, forward he's he's like reaching here. Right, with his leg up here and then one leg down here like that. Uh, again, they've added like trees and stuff like that just to make a little bit more contact overall. Though this one didn't get that. It seems to be fine. I'm not sure exactly how helpful that is. One cool touch here is look at this. The ground where he like threw his fist is cracked. Do you see that? It's stuff like this. And I have another one I'm going to show you next, I think, that really allow you to tell so much more of a story um, with a sculpted base. When they interact like this, this is not really giving him any more of a dynamic pose. He could do this on a flat base. But you wouldn't get this cracked earth effect there, if that makes sense. And that is something you can really only tell if you actually use the base to also kind of have a story. So here's another one that, again, is using its base to help tell a story. So this is a very fun one because he has a whole bunch of arms. But then he's, like, blocking his, like, an attack. And you know he's doing that because if you see, he's like launched these into the ground that are now lifting the ground up. And you can see these slide marks as his feet have slid back from the impact. So he just got hit, right? And he slid back. You can see the slide on that foot and the slide on this foot as he braces up against all the earth that he's like shoved up. I love this mini. When I saw this mini, I, I pretty much fell in love with this game. I love the fact that they're telling a story just through your mini. You could talk about this mini and what it does, how it acts, its strengths and weaknesses, just by looking at it, right? It's got all these arms. It's obviously using these while being defensive and blocking that. It has this big sword, but it's not even pulled out right now. It's just taking this huge hit and it's just sliding through the earth. It just, it looks so cool. Also on the back, it looks like they have a little symbol. I didn't notice that. Do they all have symbols? They all have symbols. Look at that. Very cool though. I mean, just, just, just awesome. I love it. I think that's great. I like the little, little fins on the helmet too. But golly guys, what a great way to, to make something look dynamic. I mean, I, you can't just look at a, a plain mini standing there again, I don't think, you know? I mean, you just can't. Here's another one. Again, talk about dynamic and again, telling a story. You can see he slammed this down into the earth there. I love these claws. Those look cool. I don't know if I ever noticed a claws like that. That's gnarly. This is a cool one. So he's got like another blade tip here by the looks of it. So I guess these are like detachable perhaps or something? I'm not quite sure. It's a very unique hammer design too. There is some some like runic scripting on here you can kind of see. But it looks like it's a sword stabbed into a big block of stone as a hammer. Which is kind of interesting. A lot of pipes and wires on this guy. Seems very technologically advanced a little bit while still having this like armor stuff. 
What an interesting little mini. But again, he's literally not sitting on the base at all. He's past the base on here. And then over here, well, I mean, he's centered on here, but he gets this really high lunge. What a unique, unique sculpt. That is, again, just awesome. And guys, compared to the, the minis you get in the 2015 version of, uh, you know, uh, Kingdom Death Monster, the core box, <laughs> they're all just like stained in there, man. Compared to this stuff, look at this. Look at this. I love it. So he's literally like on what looks almost like the arc, like this big boat and just landed on here. It split it apart that you can see it's just like splashing everywhere, um, swooshing out. This is just coming forward. You can see it flaring up as it does as he pulls this back in one big motion. You have this hair coming out. Looks super dynamic. Very much a power stance. You can see the crushed uh, wood uh, underneath both feet. What an awesome awesome mini just so cool no i mean we're not even talking about the design i like the weapon just incredible that looks awesome i love it what a cool mini you can't help but feel like strong and powerful with that you know look at this one look at this again look look, look at all this like the, the the feather stuff with the like little shield stuff in here jeez and then this this like bow with this like uh, arrow thing that they're doing. I mean, just crazy looking. Like the the person themselves is like the most boring part. But this weapon and this cloak and stuff, freaking sweet. That's what it is. Now, again, in gray, I don't think it quite looks as good, right? Like, because there's a texture on this rock and there's a texture on the feather. And it kind of does blend in. The assembly, by the way, is um, fantastic. It's about as perfect as you can imagine you'd get. Um, I do notice the line goes through some of the feathers here, um, which is kind of unfortunate. I would have liked it to either wiggle around them perhaps a little bit or in the feathers and then start some more. Um, I think it'll look fine once painted-ish, but that line is going to be hard to kind of not see. Everywhere else it looks fine though. It's just right there. It kind of goes past it a little bit. But I mean, it, like, it can look kind of similar, right? Until you paint it different colors and texture and stuff like that. Or let's see, you do have your little boat that, that uh, goes through, so we'll oh, come on. Come out here. Come out here. Get, come out here. <laughs> so there's your uh, your Argo that can go around on the tiles and, and kind of do its thing. That's your home base. And again, it's way zoomed out. You see these massive buildings on top of it and stuff. And you store your Titans inside of it and everything. So very much a zoomed out view of it. And the map is really zoomed out in general anyway. All right, take a look at this. Again, it looks awesome. Very powerful. You can see the impact and you see the scoot back and all this. Just the motion that the terrain allows you to, to have is cool. This is a very neat, I'm trying to see what that is. Oh yeah, look, it's like actual people and stuff. There's like a whole scene here. That's neat. Very cool. I dig that. I dig that. You have some of those connection pieces still on them. Uh, very, very well, um, like trimmed like there's not a whole lot of like uh mold line or anything like that there's a tiny bit but it's very tiny um which is just incredible i feel the, the veins popping on stuff simply right here could be a slightly better but overall it matches the muscle definition which helps hide it quite a bit especially from the top here which is probably the most common way you're going to see it though i think you'll see it from the back as well but yeah, very, very cool. You see the little like lip here and the little lip here? I appreciate that. It makes it a little bit less obvious. This kind of middle part here is filled in as opposed to just being flat, right? That's kind of the thing you want to avoid with that. All right, we got some more little things. Let's take a look at some of the little things here. Here is the little tiny uh, version of the guy that will follow you around. Probably again on the map. See, he's following you around. There will be a bigger version we'll see here soon. And I think you can actually fight him. Let's see, there's a little thing here. I'm trying to get out. There's this little thing. I have no idea on earth what this is. I think it involves part of a bad guy um, that I'm seeing here that I'll show you here shortly. Uh, let's see, I think that is it for the like, Titans and stuff. So let's go ahead and get, um, I think this, yeah, I don't think that's a Titan. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get to some of the other minis here. Let's go ahead and start. Oh, wait, look, we got Nyx. Perfect. There's Nyx. Uh, uh, Cro Madara crossover. I think everybody would be excited about that. Very cool mini. The scythe is always cool. These wings look awesome. They look super cool. I really dig those wings. Um, it looks like it's almost like 
you know, moving those out, right? Um, you almost don't get the sense of how big she is here. Uh, but at being a Titan, she would be quite big. And uh, uh, again, like the pants and stuff, like none of that quite even match uh, where she'd be, though it does a little bit. Having this connected here helps nice, and this isn't connected here. So, you know, it's quite skinny. You do get this gap here and gap here, which look nice. Um, it's quite sturdy, which is good as well. Okay, uh, the only other one I think I should show is this one. I believe this is the first and only god form you have uh, without buying the god form thing. Remember I said you could go Super Saiyan? This is what I mean. So, like, as, as you're, like, playing, if you don't die, uh, sometimes you can essentially be... Uh, made like this divine entity with the superpowers and then you can replace your mini with this and just like go to town freaking boss style uh, love the sword here um, this looks like it pretty much it's the transformed version of the shield guy looks like that's pretty much the transformation they're trying to go there same helmet uh, still has the sword dropped the shield <laughs> ain't no shield use here that's for wusses um, all the electricity is I believe the Zeus version of this like god form stuff you can get but again looks super cool this hair growth out kind of stuff and electricity coming out of the hand like this looks awesome very very cool this would look incredible painting take a look at the bull right here's the bull if i recall correctly when i played there were two versions of it and i didn't play with the tentacle stuff and maybe they've just changed that maybe there's another version coming um, but I remember I could replace the head and tail. I do remember this now. And I made it look more like a bull. This looks freaking gross. Like, there's the bull head here. There's, like, stuff coming out of the eyes. And there's all sorts of nastiness. Uh, definitely not cool. Definitely more unique. Um, though I just liked the, the, the bull. These um, little tabards are really cool. I dig that. I like the columns that it's charging through. I like that it's it's definitely coming all over the base. I mean, this is front foot is all the way there at pretty much the edge. I feel like how it's kind of centered though. Overall, very, very cool. All of these little lines I think came out really well as well. Uh, looks, looks really good. Okay, we got this guy out. And this is a unique mini, that is for sure. Uh, <laughs> very fat. Uh, has like this big rock. Uh, like, it even has like this whole like collapsed building on their back if you're trying to see how big they are. And again, you have those like Titan hookups and stuff all over here too. This big gun that's like strapped to this like thing. It's like spewing out God knows what. Nothing good, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> and then and these little tiny feet. So it's like this huge block of a person there, which I really dig. Definitely fits the size of the, the guy to have this big, big uh, backpack, as it were. I dig that. All right. Let's see. This guy's super cool. He has these like chains that can stretch out or sh shorten or he can spin. So he can like be melee and then randomly have this really long range and stuff. And there's all sorts of fun stuff he can do with weapons like this. You see he does not have hands at all. They're literally attached to his hands. This kind of stretched neck thing is hardcore. Um, I'm not even sure if you can see. And again, you can get a sense of how big he is by the basing, um, which just helps kind of really give you a sense of how big of a battle this really is. These spikes on the back are hardcore. Looks like they're on the back of his of his uh, arms too. The symbol looks good, by the way. The chain is filled in, but it looks good. Um, the chain here, I think they were smart in that they just put a whole bunch of chains. So it's just like a blob of chains, which work. Um, as opposed to like these, which are very kind of, you can see the individual locks. And it does fill in that middle part, which is unfortunate. I would prefer it like that. I would prefer it a little bit... Uh, to where there's no gap there, so it looks closer to this. Because I think this looks better, right? Because you just, there's not really any room to fill in anything, whereas when you get it like this, there is that space. In other words, make these come in a bit more, just make it, fatten it up a little bit. I think that would be really good. But these, these are solid, these, these sit fine. So that's good. All right, let's see here. We got this guy here. This is what I was talking about with that ball because uh, it has the same faces, I believe. Uh, I have no idea what's going on here. You can see a person here. So it's about the size of a person. So even these are big, right? It was different faces. Look at the different eyes, the cracked skull and stuff. But then it's like this mechanical spider thing. And it's like broken on the top with this weird hand coming out. Like it's giving birth to something. Just some... Some downright craziness here is what's going on here. Look at this one. It's got a freaking teeth in its eyes. Ugh. Ugh. This is the most normal one there. <laughs> 
And then, uh, not to be outdone, we have this guy with a ball as well. This is kind of like an Atlas kind of guy, right? Again, uh, the chain here I think looks quite good, actually. Um, I don't know. It looks like it's a little holder thing here. And this looks like a, uh, like hieroglyphs almost, right? Like it's, it's, it's showing a design of some kind. But then this top part, I don't know what the heck's going on there at all. He's carrying it, I guess it's like wrapped around his arms and stuff. Weird. This freaking exposed spine junk going on there. There's some weird crap going on here, guys. All right, let's take a look at this one. This is a fun one. Look at this. Um, I, is this another god form? I can't remember. Uh, definitely flat here, so they just ended the... It's made to look like front like this. I don't know if this is... It looks like it's probably a god form. Um, I don't even see any hookups or anything like that. Did, did, did Zeus over here have any hookups? It's definitely a different size. That's for sure. Yeah, he's got the hookup. So this is not a Titan, at least not a, not to my knowledge. So I'm not sure what's going on here, but uh, muscle definition is just fantastic. Of course, uh, proportions are really cool. I really like the long legs here. Um, he does have toes. I do appreciate that. The fists don't seem too small. The hair looks great. This whole freaking thing is cool. I dig that. It's attached to well too. And uh, yeah, the swirling. Uh, like water with the rocks here just looks super cool just looks cool now this guy took a lot of iterations i remember and i'm i'm really happy with where they kind of ended up so you can see the person here I believe they're controlling him um and then you have like this like muscle vert like he's just all muscle right it's like the skin's off here you see all these different like um greek letters and stuff like strewn about them then you have this, like, here's his face here, and then this, like, fire swirling around his blade. But they made the blade very obvious as well. There's these skulls in the back there, and you can see all the different swords stabbed into his spine. Just a really, really cool look. Very unique. Very different. And I do really appreciate it. I like, I like what they ended up doing here with the sword. I think that's a great iteration. It was interesting to see them go through the iterations, right? Here's the Hecaton. And again, to get a sense of size, these are like cows. And it's like holding there. Um, it's got like this gaping maw thing here with all these different hands. And it's got, you know, again, more hands as it's standing on. And then more hands up here. And it just, uh, it's just, it's very handy. <laughs> uh, more like army, right? There's the actual arms, not just hands. Um, but you can see some are fists, some are open, some are big, some are small. It's a big mix of them, really. Um, and then its face is made out of fingers. Because why the heck not? I like its little eyes. I just see through like that. <laughs> All right, we got two more in this one. We got this one here, which is super cool. I love the combination of tentacle and feathers, and I'm not sure I really have seen another mini that mixes those two things, feathers and tentacles. Typically, don't go together. Imagine that. You can see some of it's actually on the base, and then they, they assembled the mini here to kind of fit that, which is interesting to see, actually, I feel. Uh, they have a different symbol here. I think all the enemies have that symbol. Um, so if you were wondering if this was an enemy or a titan, it is a titan, right? Just based off the symbol. Whereas this guy is whatever the heck that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know. I don't know. Not, not a, not a god form because he just has a normal titan thing. He's something special. <laughs> anyway, I love the, like, this always reminded me of a beak part of the helmet here and the tentacles coming out of, like the mouth. The broken wings, by the way, are super cool. I dig that. Like, none of these wings are fully formed. They're all stubby. Um, so I don't think he can fly at all. But maybe, who knows? These fingers look freaking sweet. Those look cool. Yeah, just a cool looking guy. That's for sure. And then finally, the big baddie himself. Uh, yeah, this guy is bad news. So he's got these really cool, like, moth-like wings almost. And then these super beady eyes. This big, long nose thing. And he will... To follow you around the map like Nemesis um, and, uh, and like uh, Resident Evil and stuff like that, which is super cool. Uh, spindly legs just decimating the ship here. He just does not care. As he, I mean, he is massive. He's really big and uh, really nasty. <laughs> All right, one more here. Actually, I lied. There's still one more. And that's this one. And again, talk about cool. I actually have to zoom out a little bit for him, I feel. <laughs> Uh, all these different things are super interesting. They look like speakers to me. I don't know exactly what they are. Um, but they're, they're very round and like very much not normal, I feel. There's some in the middle here. There's some on his face. 
It's got this like really cool, you hear that? Really cool texture on his cloth here, which I appreciate a lot. Um, you see on the back, uh, just exactly how big he is. Here's these big giant pillars and stuff. These little draping pieces are really cool too, like little draped parchments and stuff. Got like almost like little gear wing things here. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. I don't know. I mean, you know, God knows what a story is, but that's that. All right, let's look at the secret one here. Uh, you can skip this section, but I don't think it's secret at all. I think it's just like a uh, round two stuff. But if you don't want to see it, actually, I mean, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. You can skip the section if you want. It doesn't look that bad. All right, so what do we got here? We got, looks like the, it looks like you have to build something here. Look at this. What's going on here? What is going on here? Look at, look at this guy. What the heck? I'll see. That's too big there. All right, hold on. What's going on? That's a smaller one, but still no. What is that? Okay, oh wait, I think they go into these little bases here, perhaps? Is it like that? No. What the? What the heck is going on here? I don't even know. I think this builds up. Oh, it, it, if you recall, they wanted you to be able to actually climb. Hold on. I'll put these back here, because I believe I know what's going on here. Um. We'll look at some of the, the characters here for now, but I believe for these, you can actually like build it up and climb up on top of it. So here's some of the like higher ranking Titans you can have. Again, very, very cool. Love the flaming sword. I can only wonder where you get that. Again, still quite large. The bottom of the shoe is sculpted. This muscle definition is massive. Holding the blade backwards makes you instantly cool. Um, at least the like, teenager inside me feels that way. I love the um, armor muscles. So it reminds me of very Roman-like. But then a super cool skull helmet, which just looks freaking sweet. I dig that. Look at this one. Amazing. It's got one wing. It's like the one wing angel. Sephiroth would be proud. <laughs> this huge freaking sword thing. And it looks like it's all... Um, I don't think it's really even ABS. It's just a normal kind of PVC. It looks like an ABS mix. It's a little shiny. Um, so it's, it's a good plastic for sure. These feathers are super cool, guys. Like, really cool. I like how the, the bottom side is different. I like how it's folded, too. Like, it goes up and then down like that. Just cool stuff. Very long head with the hair going out like that. That's interesting. Looks like we have a little little tentacle shield thingy thing going on there. I don't even know. Then you have this one. This looks like a really skinny guy. He's got this giant club he's going to whack you with. But like, <laughs> look at the like, there's even a size difference, right? Like, these titans are getting bigger. That's what that is. Super cool, though. I dig. I love the giant mallet. And it just, you can feel the weight is just going to lug that down. It reminds me of like a Dark Souls kind of, kind of move, right? All right, so let's go in and shelve this a little bit because I believe we need to look at the minis in the main box. There's still a few here. At least one of them is really, really, really big. So let's take a look. Again, this plastic, guys. Freaking killer. That's what it is. Okay. Yep, well, let's go ahead and, uh, and get started here. So here's one. And it's not done yet. You can see the pieces where it can go into. Just, I mean... Like, like, where do we even start on this, guys? This is heavy. This is, like, solid. Look, there's a person there. That's the size of this thing. That's a person. Right there. I mean, he's not feeling too great, but there he is. It's a little bit of a mold line here on the bottom, but it's pretty hidden on the bottom. There's another person right there. That's a person. This thing is massive. <laughs> its hands are bigger than people. Um, I really dig all of the wings. There's like a ton of wings. And again, more tentacles. Very interesting. So I believe that some of this stuff can come in. So it can be like that. Um, and then I think there's probably a, a wing uh, here. Like so. Okay. And then I think there's one more. And now why this is not in there, I believe is because... I believe it's because um, you can replace it and like climb up, but maybe not with this one. 
Maybe I just, I don't know. Maybe just wanted me to assemble that <laughs> for reasons. Because I don't think any of these are what I'm looking for. So we're going to keep looking. I'm going to leave that built like that. Either way, super cool. But there's more. All right. So let's talk about this one. Uh, obviously, it needs to be built more. But obviously, it's freaking incredible, too. Look at this thing. So this is already the enemy here. It's the swirly thing. You see, there's its face. There's its like claws coming out. There's like some weird snake tail thing going on here as it swirls and breaks this uh, to pieces here. But I think this is where you can put, see I don't even know, if that goes in, I think, I don't think that's it. One of these, I imagine, is it, let me take some more of these pieces out. Looks like that might be it, maybe. Looks like, oh yeah, so you could you could stand on there perhaps, right? Right, do, do your thing, I guess. Or maybe an enemy does or something, I'm not sure. I don't know if that's the only piece that can go in there or uh, not. Looks like it might be. For now, I'm gonna leave that in. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I think I've at least may have found that. So anyway, I mean, super cool, obviously. A little bit of a bent spear here. Oh, there is a piece in the back there. Looks like that goes in there. Or, or, or. Two, you know, two people can stand on it. Huh? Huh? Yeah? <laughs> You're like, yeah, whatever. Um, I think that's it for pieces. So that's super cool, I guess. Let me take that off. That one could probably stay in there. I'm okay with that staying in there. All right, so then there's this one, which again, super cool. I mean, just incredible. And obviously, obviously, this goes to it, right? So this would go in right there, and then you can you can do your thing there, I guess. Woohoo! Like that. But hold it straight. Like that. <laughs> just on top of it with, with that thing. Um, or like these little teeth here. That's kind of interesting to see. I love this. Look at this. It's, it's like picking that up there. I like how freaking thick this is too. That's just super gnarly. It's like going through. You can see how it's a messing with the terrain. Or it's like coming out of here. Look at that, guys. Oh, gnarly. <laughs> I dig it. Wow. So I think, does that mean... I don't know. That wouldn't go on there. That's still that piece. So... The other piece, by the way, we go over here. If I take like this out and this out, you can start actually putting platforms on him. Look at that. Huh? Huh? I think this one will go here. Yep. And oh, come on. This one will go here. Like. So, so you can kind of climb up and then smack him in the face, I think is the idea there. Um, but it still looks decent, especially with a, a guy on it, I imagine. Like, uh, let's go and put him up here, right? So, it's better with people on it, I imagine. Like so. Maybe they should almost go down there, huh? Maybe that makes more sense. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. There you go. Like that. That's kind of cool. I dig that. Person still wants to fall over. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely, definitely interesting. Well, guys, I mean, that is actually everything now. These, by the way, are just incredible. They really are. Uh, super, super cool enemies. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, of course, let me know. I'm excited to dive into this. Uh, I will see about doing an early review, perhaps after a few play sessions only, uh, so I can get kind of uh, some detailed uh, thoughts on it without having to play three different cycles and then tell you how it is at the very end, which uh, will take quite a bit of time, especially as I'm moving uh, at the beginning of February. There's Christmas time. I got a family of six. There's all sorts of stuff going on in my life. So uh, <laughs> I don't know when I'll finish all of this, but my goodness, am I excited to get started. Guys, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye, guys.